I've spent the past two years learning Pygame. This video details my journey from starting with almost zero programming experience to creating a best-selling Pygame course on Udemy. Let's go back to the beginning. It was the end of 2020 and we'd been ordered back inside for lockdown 2.0. Having spent the first lockdown playing games and watching movies, I felt I should do something more productive with my time, like learning to code. So I picked a language to start with, Python seemed to be super popular. I tried to make some games with it, but quickly learned that I would need to use a library. And that's when I came across Pygame. After watching a whole bunch of tutorials, I was finally ready, and I began with something easy, tic-tac-toe. It took me a while to make, but at this point I was just getting to grips with things like the display window and the event handler, and I was just happy to be able to create my first game. I then moved on to Snake, which turned out to be more challenging than I expected. I had a lot of trouble getting the snake movement to work correctly, but it forced me to get a much better understanding of Python lists, which turned out to be very useful. My next couple of games were two more classic 2D retro games, Pong and Breakout. With each game, I challenged myself to use more of the available features of Pygame to avoid becoming complacent and limiting my knowledge. In these two games, I worked with Collision for the first time and implemented some very rudimentary physics. The Pong game even had some AI, which, despite being very basic, was a good start. I continued with the theme of 2D arcade games and tackled Space Invaders next. At this point, I was starting to get a good handle of the basics, so I pushed myself further and added a whole bunch of features that I hadn't worked with before. For example, I used game assets for the first time. I found a bunch of sprites, music, and sound effects, and put them all together in this game. I also learned about and applied mass collision to get accurate collision checks between the ships and the bullets. I figured out how to create buttons, and I learned how to make animations, which I then used to make these explosions. I then broke away from the retro games and took on a well-known mobile game, Flappy Bird. This used a lot of what I learned on the Space Invaders project and gave me a chance to work a bit more with physics to control the bird properly. At 234 lines of code, this was one of my smaller projects, but it was definitely a fun one to develop. My next project was a platformer, which at the time was my biggest project and is still my most watched tutorial. The hardest part was to figure out how to create the game levels, which at that point I hadn't worked with yet. I wanted to figure this out without Google or any tutorials, so I played around with a few ideas and eventually decided to split the level into a grid of equal squares, assign a number to each square to determine what sort of tile to draw inside it, and save that data in multiple level files. I later learned that this is called a tile map, and it's a very common method of creating levels, so I was pretty pleased that I worked that out myself. After this, I wanted to make an RPG style game like Final Fantasy. I wasn't sure where to start, so I began with the battle element of it. This was a turn-based system, so each character had to wait for the others to complete their actions. This was where I really delved further into animations and added multiple animation sequences for each character depending on the action they were performing. This game took me quite a while to create, and I realized that taking on a full RPG on my own was a pretty huge project. So I decided against it and moved on to the next one, which was a shooting game. This game was a real jump in difficulty for me. It had bigger levels and a camera that followed the player. I had enemies with some AI, still fairly dumb, but more intelligent than anything I'd made before. I added collectible items, shooting, and grenades, and built a level editor. At around 900 lines of code, this was double the size of my next biggest game, which was the platformer. It took me a long time to complete, and there were times when I really lost motivation because I would get stuck with bugs that I couldn't fix for days. I persevered and managed to complete it, and while I was really proud of the game, the process burned me out. I needed a break from Pygame and game dev in general. I took a few months out and then slowly came back to it again with the intention of only working on smaller projects for fun. I began with this castle defender game, which in the end wasn't actually that small. I wanted to make an endless game, where the aim is to keep going against an ever increasing difficulty in a form of stronger waves of enemies. And I also like the upgrade and repair mechanism, allowing you to strengthen your castle as the game progresses. Having dipped my toes back into game dev, I went further and made this two-player fighting game based on Street Fighter. There were definitely some features that could be added, like character selection and AI for the second player, but at this point I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew, and so I stuck with developing the core of the game mechanics instead. Over a year had now passed since I made that shooting game, so I decided to tackle another big game, which was this dungeon crawler. Since this was a top-down game, the player could move up and down as well as left and right, so the camera had to follow him along both axes. This meant an upgrade to my level editor, as well as refinement to how the camera is handled. I wanted smarter AI, so I added line of sight and targeting, meaning the enemies would chase the player once they spotted you, but it was possible to shake them off by hiding. Instead of bullets, I used the bow and arrow, which was aimed with the mouse. To date, this is my biggest game, and I used everything that I've learned over the last two years to make it. So what next? Maybe I'll go back to the RPG game? or try a different game library altogether. As long as it's fun and enjoyable, then it doesn't really matter. I hope you like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.